Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the build of the Hangar 9 MB339. Uh, last weekend I was in Miami and I got to see Ali fly this thing in person and it was very cool to see. Very nice, very impressive airplane. So we're continuing on with the wings and the surfaces and everything else that needs to happen. So let's dive back in to this aircraft build. All right, last video we finished the surfaces on the right wing. We need to get the uh, left wing finished up. So we'll get this up. Nothing's really different than the, uh, than the other wing that we did. So nothing overly exciting, but we'll get that done. And then we're gonna move on to probably our landing gear. So just wrapping up the surfaces on the left wing and uh, just something to be aware of here. Uh, I would suggest putting a couple drops of CA on your, uh, your leading edge anti-rotation pins. Uh, this one was a little bit loose. And uh, so anyways, I put some uh, drops of thick CA on there and that should take care of that. So just got to run the wires to the root of the wing and then we will start getting the gear sorted out for this, uh, this aircraft. So next step that we're doing here is we are going to cut out our covering in the gear opening. So you can see the outline here if you have good lighting. Uh, so fairly straightforward. You want to keep a little bit of that gear uh, opening covering and that is going to go into the opening with your heat iron. So you leave, I don't know, maybe two, three millimeters. Um, I'm gonna switch this blade out though because you always wanna start off with a very sharp X-Acto blade. This one's sharp, but it's missing our little tip. So let's switch this out and come back to this. All right, so we got our brand new blade. Let's get this cut out. So that worked out good. Yeah, fine. This, it has a nice uh, plastic liner already installed in there, which is really nice to see. That's, uh, that's pretty cool. So we've got a little bit of cleanup to do on the liner, but uh, otherwise it looks like it's ready to seal this into the opening. So, so we'll get our heat iron uh, fired up. We'll seal that into the opening. Now it looks like we've already got uh, blind nuts, I think, installed. Yes, there's already blind nuts installed in the gear mounts, which is great to see. We got a little bit of glue cleanup here. You don't want to leave that stuff on there because you want your gear to sit flat. But uh, good looking gear um, system as well. We've got ply uh, laminated with carbon. We've got a couple layers of that as well. So that's nice to see. Looks like good quality stuff. It looks like there's a carbon piece inside there, which is good. And. Uh, uh, there's aluminum in there as well too. So I think that's all built into the system here. So that's pretty cool. There's uh, a, looks like an aluminum piece down there. I can see some bolts down there as well. And that's probably mounted. There's a big piece of ply right here, like one inch ply that that aluminum is mounted to. So it looks like they've done some good work on the gear mounts. Very nice to see. All right guys, so we are getting our gear ready for installation here. And I think it's time for another episode of Tip Time. And this Tip Time is brought to you by Trusty Bent Screwdriver. Oh, and hey, you want your own Trusty? We can help with that. All right guys, limited production run. We have made 94, actually four already spoken for. So we've got 90 Trusty Bent screwdrivers. These are all serial numbered. So each one has its own serial number. You can see there, this is trusty number five. The bend matches the original trusty exactly. And we have exactly the same screwdriver being used. So first production run, don't know if we'll ever do any more, but we've got 90 trusties available. Uh, this video I think is gonna come out Saturday morning and I think those are gonna go live on the website Saturday morning. So if you're seeing this in the video, chances are there might be some left on the website, but uh, there's a link down below. They're only gonna last as long as supplies last. So if you want one, order it. All right, tip time by Trusty. Loctite, Loctite, Loctite. If you've never watched my content before, um, Loctite. I talk about Loctite a lot. And if you have watched my content before, this is very familiar. When you get a set of landing gear like this from any manufacturer, don't assume anything is Loctited. So you wanna go through your gear, you wanna do things like your wheel screws, 
We've taken this all apart here, our fixing screw on the bottom, anything that is metal to metal contact, these guys here, this guy here, you wanna do all of the fasteners on your gear to make sure that you do not have an issue with your landing gear. If you don't Loctite them, as Trusty always says, you'll be sorry because you'll be Loctiting them later at the field when they come loose. So that's your tip time brought to you by Trusty Bent Screwdriver. All right, so we've uh, here's a shot of what the gear looks like. So there's a little bit of a spacer in there. We've got bearings in the wheels, which is nice. I've taken all of our fasteners out here, Loctited them. Uh, now the brakes, there's no spacer that keeps them spaced off from the wheels, I believe. So there's a little bit of rubbing there. I don't think that's gonna be an issue, but uh, that's the electronic braking system. And uh, what I'll do now is go through and Loctite all of our other pieces, and then we will uh, hook these guys up and operate them and see how they work. All right, and if you've never done this type of work before, I will show you how to do this. So basically we've got our heat iron heated up and uh, we're just going to go along and heat this up around the edge. And you're basically just sticking it to the sides. Don't have to hold it on there very long and works quite well. So that's basically the process of getting your excess covering glued to the openings. So pretty straight stuff. Pretty easy. So just like that, we'll continue around the rest of the opening and then we'll come back and take a look at the gear. All right, so we're ready to put this one back together. When you're putting it back together, the axle already has a flat spot on it. So just be aware of that and you wanna make sure that flat spot obviously coincides with the set screw. So just going through the gear controller here now, there's a couple things we wanna be aware of. So first of all, the instructions are, are quite good. Um, that's nice to see, nice to see good instructions, very simple to follow. Um, one of the things that I was uh, concerned about is, is this gear controller parasitic or is it not parasitic? So what does that mean? Well, that means that um, when you've got the receiver off right there and a battery plugged into the gear controller, it is currently parasitic, so it's pulling power from the system. So if we power the receiver back on, uh, this stays on red all the time. So knowing that, that is going to determine how we wire this thing up. With our DSM-10 unit, what that means is we're gonna have power coming into the DSM-10 and we're going to power the gear controller after the DSM-10, just to make sure that we've got a switched power source. There's another option for this as well. We could also use like an SPO6 switch and provide power that way. So we may do that. I'm gonna take a look at this and see, but uh, just be aware of that stuff. So I'm gonna get the gear set up here and we'll cycle it and see what it looks like. Okay, so we've got our gear hooked up here and uh, we've got our brakes hooked up and everything. So I've already cycled this and everything looks good. Now, as I was cycling this, I put some of our spray grease on the threads and the pivot points and everything. So I'll show you guys what this looks like. So gear looks good. And um, I did take out all the, the points holding the leg into the trunnion and all that. Just to inspect everything. So the, the set screws holding the, on the leg itself, I've already Loctited those the ones holding the leg to the trunnion. I haven't Loctited those. I'm just gonna wait till uh, we have these installed so we can adjust our toe in on the, uh, the system. So other thing is the brake system. We've got that hooked up, fairly straightforward. Now there is an ABS setting on this controller, which right here, so dip switch number three, if you put that uh, on or off, that turns your ABS on or off. So right now I've got our brake set on this slider, which is normal for me. So I will put that halfway and we've got ABS brakes. It's pretty cool. It kind of just pulses. And if we go max, 
uh, it's a little bit stronger. And then if we take that dip switch and go ABS off, what happens is the brakes are just uh, basically on or off is what they are. So, so fairly straightforward. I think we're gonna leave the ABS on. I think that's a good feature. It's basically pulsing, which is nice. So that's the gear. Um, now that one side's done, let's service our other gear. All right, so this is what I consider the best path for this uh, landing gear setup. So I'll extend this and show you. So we've got the brake coming down the side of the wheel. We've wrapped it in spiral wrap. Um, that spiral wrap goes to about here on that wire. And that's kind of the best way to do it. I was thinking about fastening it down to the side of the retract unit, but problem is then this tends to fold underneath here and prevents the, uh, the retract from retracting. So the power for the actual uh, actuator here, we've just tucked that right in. Now there's an, like an electronic board and that fits very nicely right underneath the, uh, the landing gear itself because there's a fair bit of space once you get past that plastic uh, wheel well area. So if you look here, I'll hold this down while we retract it and just watch the brake line because we've got the spiral wrap on there, it kind of just folds nicely into the wheel well. So um, I think that's gonna work out beautifully. There we go and it stays out of the way. Spiral wrap prevents it from getting caught on anything. And that's pretty much the spot where our gear is gonna be. So thumbs up. I think we found a good mounting point and solution and everything for the landing gear. So with that done, I'm now going to screw this landing gear down. Need to find the bolts for that. But uh, that's what you're looking at. So Nez is supervising our wings here and we are done with installing the landing gear on both wings. So that is finished. Next thing we're gonna work on is we are gonna get our wiring done up. Hi, Nez. Nobody. We're gonna get our wiring done up at the root of the wing here. So we need a three, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. 12 pin connector will do us perfect because we have our aileron, our flap, our lighting, our gear, and our brakes. So we'll use an Ashlock 12 pin on this side. So our Ashlock connection will come through right there on the big hole towards the leading fastening point. So we're gonna run all of our wires right to this location right here. All right, so we got our ash lock connectors laid out here. Now we're using the females, I guess, depending on how you wanna call them. The ones with the pins is always my preference to put on the wings because then you can take a standard servo connector, plug it in there and run surfaces like the flaps and the ailerons. So in a situation like this, when I have a choice of only having one connector, this is the connector that I will put on the, on the wing side, and then this is the connector that I'll put on the fuselage side. Now you can still use these on the wings, that's not a problem. The only thing you need to use, if you're plugging into them, is one of the little power box pin setups here. So uh, that allows you to take a standard servo connector, plug it into there, and still use it uh, and operate your servos. So we get all of our pins crimped, our ash lock connectors hooked up, and then we will label the connector with the layout. All right, so in the last clip, I, uh, I had nine pin connectors there. So I've switched those out to the 12 pin connectors. So there's our 12s, there's our nines. I actually got them all installed and I was like, hey, wait a sec, we don't have enough spots. So anyways, we've got all of our connectors done. Now what I'll do in this situation is I'm going to put some spiral wrap. So I, I will generally always put something around the lines here to protect them from you know rubbing, going in and out and stuff. Um, sometimes I use snakeskin, sometimes I use spiral wrap. So in this case, we'll just cut a, a small section of spiral wrap about that long and uh, we'll get that installed on the wing connector. All right, so here's a perfect example of what I'm talking about. So we still have to get our ailerons hooked up. So we've got the receiver on, radios on, our servo lead is coming from the right aileron channel. And of course, paying very close attention to polarity and everything, we've got our connector hooked up to our pins, which are the aileron pins. So now our aileron servo is functioning. So what we can do now is we can get our linkage set up. All right, so we got our aileron hooked up here. I put a piece of the pro tubing over top of the clevis, got the clevis all adjusted, and we are rock solid. It's actually a really nice setup. Um, I'm probably a little bit too tight, I think, but we can adjust that. Um, I was just basing it off of where the, uh, 
the flaps are happy. So anyways, that is, yeah, we're a little, little off on that actually. I'm probably gonna take that off and undo it a couple turns. So anyways, that's how we're doing it. Um, I don't like to use the, um, the nuts on my clevises and stuff like this. I like to use CA. So once this is all set, it's not right now because we have to adjust it. I'll take some thin CA, wick it in the threads, use a bit of kicker, and then the only way that that comes loose is if you add some heat to it. So I prefer that way than instead of the, the, uh, the nuts. Okay, so with the wings done, we've set them aside and everything with the wings except the lighting or the tip tanks is ready to go. So those are sitting over there and we've got our other surfaces sitting over here on the bench. But before we get to the other surfaces, we wanna deal with the front landing gear. Now the front landing gear, very well shown in the manual here as far as positioning and servo positioning and such. One thing I don't like is the plastic horn with the ball joints. We won't be doing that. Uh, if we can't use a clevis on the plastic horn, then we'll switch out the plastic horn to something where we can use a ball joint. So a metal or aluminum or uh, carbon uh, horn is what we'll end up using. So uh, I'm gonna get this uh, service just like we did on the main gear. So we'll tighten up all of our uh, fixtures and all that stuff. And then we will look at getting the servo installed on the gear. All right, little important note here with the nose door. So JP Hobby or JP Gear also does the same thing. So what you wanna do is you wanna take your nose gear off uh, they did put Loctite on our set screws, which is nice to see, but you wanna take the nose gear off and make sure you Loctite the screws that are holding the servo mounting plate on. Now these did have a little bit of Loctite on them. Um, so that is nice to see. Very surprising actually, but uh, now that the leg's off, we'll just make sure we redo it anyways. And then what we'll do as well is we'll put a couple drops of lubricant in spot right there, just to make sure that our pin is rotating nice and freely. So we'll take a little bit of our light machine oil, just put it down here. Perfect. Now we can put our gear back on. Now the gear doesn't, uh, the orientation of the gear does not matter at all. Uh, the other thing that's, uh, You'll see here there's a basically a, a ridge or a flat spot all the way around, so it really doesn't matter. The, the gear leg's not going to pop off. So we will uh, put our Loctite on the, these guys and get them fastened uh, back in place. Okay, so just setting up the nose steering here. So again, I'm not using the ball joint on the uh, servo side. Uh, it's not a good idea on a plastic arm. So what I've done is I've threaded the ball joint on the stock arm or rod and tighten that down as much as we can. So basically I need to trim this rod down a little bit and our clevis, this is a Sullivan uh, golden clevis, but it's the metric size. They do make this in the metric size. So that's gonna be threaded all the way down. So we pretty much need to cut a, a large chunk of that off. So uh, the line up here as well is very, very straight between the ball and the, uh, the uh, servo arm there. So that's gonna work out very well. So I'll get this set up and I'll show you guys the final results. All right, so we're all set up here guys for our nose steering. I reduced the travel a little bit and uh, everything is rock solid. So nice tight linkage now. There's very, very little play in the entire system. Uh, the play that we have there is the actual uh, servo mount aluminum bending. So uh, nice and solid and I'm very happy with that. I think that's a good change using a clevis there instead of a uh, ball joint. So that's my suggestion. So we can bolt this into the fuselage now. It's gonna be fairly straightforward. Our blind nuts are already installed. You can see there in the fuselage. So we've got our mounting points already done. That is fantastic. So we'll flip the nose section over here and, uh, and get that guy bolted in. Should be fairly simple and, and easy to get it nice and straight. All right, so just installing the nose gear here. I did have the nose gear extended, but it's uh, much easier to get access to everything if the nose gear is retracted. And I think it's also gonna be easier to get it lined up straight because you can get it centered in the pocket. So I'll take you guys through the installation here. It is nice to have everything already pre-done for you, like the blind nuts. Now I'm not a fan of blind nuts for gear, especially on a plane this size, but they are installed already, so that's what we're going to use. Okay, so just centering this in the pocket. That looks good. Before I tighten this down, we'll extend it. 
just to confirm that we're happy. It's a nice feature of this gear controller is the manual button on there. I know it's really nothing special, but it is nice to have that on the uh, built into the controller. So, Okay, so happy with that. I think that's uh, good. So we'll retract that and then we can tighten everything down. surface installation time. So we are moving on to our rudder first. Now our rudders and elevators use all the same servos. So we're using uh, MKS HV747s. These are the same servo that we just installed on the nose steering. Great little servo for this. Um, tons of power, metal cased. I'm, I'm happy that we're using these servos. They're nice servos. So instructions are very simple. The cover basically goes like this. The uh, opening has not been Oh my gosh. Opening has not been cut yet. So you can see there it's filled in. So we'll cut that out. The uh, output shaft of the servo goes towards the leading edge of the surface. So it's gonna go like this right there. So one thing I wanna do first here is again, we wanna figure out what we're using for hardware. So we've got a ball joint already mounted on this side. That's pretty much fixed. Um, ideally, I wanna use a clevis. So let's see what we're gonna end up using. But first step is you gotta cut that open and uh, get our access for our servo done. So when I'm doing these guys, I'm also uh, making sure that I soak all of the balsa uh, mounting points here and all the plywood mounting points in CA. So I, uh, I'm gonna use my rubbers on this again, just to add a little bit of spacing because that brings us in line with the slots and uh, drill our holes, inject thin CA and get our servo mounted. All right guys, ended up going my preferred route here with the clevis and that worked out really well. So I carbon horn on the servo and uh, mainly the reason for the carbon horn is because the stock ones, which work very well for clevises, uh, this is not long enough. So the instructions say that you should be using a horn on the rudder that is 20 millimeters center to center. And this one is about 17, 18 maybe. So we used the carbon horn and I actually went a little bit further. So I'm about 21 to 22 millimeters. And I think that is ideal. Other thing I did here was I kind of put one spline towards the surface. So it's not perfectly perpendicular to the servo output. And the reason for that is because it would end up being way too close to this point right here. So with it one uh, spline towards the surface, now we've got good movement in both directions. Perfect. All right, so I took the tape off my surfaces here, elevator surfaces, uh, took my uh, X-Acto, cut open the openings, and uh, because of the tape, we got a little bit of peeling, uh, loosening of the, of the covering. So just took my iron and went over the surfaces again and tightened everything up, so that's good. Uh, we're gonna get our, uh, our servos installed next. So again, instructions are fairly simple and straightforward. So rudder servo, elevator servo installation gives you the layout of the uh, shaft going towards the front and all that. So we'll just follow these instructions and I'll show you guys if there's anything weird. All right, so I'll show you guys the mounting for the servo here. So that is what we are looking at. Uh, now there is a piece of balsa installed right there. Uh, that balsa needs to come out. And the reason it needs to come out is because if you don't take that out, there's no way to screw the servo in. So it's not fastened on this side right here. It's only top and bottom. So I just took my X-Acto, cut that out, no big deal at all. So we've got our right surface uh, mounted. And of course you've got some options here as far as where you're tucking the servo in. Uh, there's quite a big space in that pocket. So what I did is I just tucked the servo all the way to the underside so our arm is sticking out as much as possible. Um, I think it's better because when you come this way, um, I guess if you tucked it all the way in, it wouldn't be a big deal either. But anyways, that's what I decided to do and it makes it the same. If you just kind of randomly put it in the middle of the pocket, uh, it's gonna not be even, right? So, all right, so we've got our wire dealt with. We've got both servos installed here. And uh, what I ended up doing was putting some snakeskin over, over uh, about three quarters of the servo wire length. Reason for that is you've got 
that wire sitting in the servo pocket. So, you know, this is moving, really not a big deal, but um, this is gonna be sitting right in this area. So just wanna make sure that uh, the servo line is protected. So what we'll do now is we're gonna plug these servos back into the receiver so we can get the servo centered and we will get our linkage set up. So we're gonna do the same thing we've done on pretty much all the other ones, rod, clevis, um, all the normal stuff. Perfect. So our one elevator, this is the right elevator, is all complete. And they can see there we got tons of throw if we need it. So that is great. Uh, really is a rock solid setup. Zero play in that whole system. Uh, nice servo. Those MKS servos are wonderful. You can see we're centered there. And uh, that's perfect. One thing I'll do here is I set the max positive limit. So this is the max limit in a jetty radio anyways. This limit here, this max positive limit, is the max with mixes and everything. So if we have some, uh, if we have this set too high and you have some, uh, some sub trim when your flaps are down, things like that, you can overdrive your servo and what can happen is you will contact the opening and damage things. So um, what I do there is I go through and set my max positive limits uh, to the mechanical limit so we, uh, we can't wreck anything. That's kind of an important step. So we've done that on the, the right servo, elevator two. Now we'll do it on elevator one, which is our left elevator servo. All right, and little plug for channel membership. So we talked about the trusty bent screwdrivers that are gonna be available when uh, this video comes out on Saturday. Uh, very limited supply, but channel membership. So the channel members that are currently, as of right now today, a channel member, they are getting a free trusty bent screwdriver shipped to them wherever they are in the world uh, as a thank you for being a channel member. So I encourage you guys to check out channel membership. There's a link down below that says join. Uh, I've got links in the video description, stuff like that. But what, uh, what channel membership really gets you initially is early access to all the videos. So you get to see the videos a week, ish two weeks before anybody else gets to see the videos that's the primary thing with channel membership um, we are going to do various things um, as time progresses for channel members i'm not sure what yet always looking for fun ideas but uh, definitely check out channel membership if you're interested it is a paid service but uh, it's my thank you to you guys for being channel members appreciate it there's only seven of you right now but uh it's pretty cool to see. So thank you guys, and uh, thank you to you channel members. All right, so very successful episode of the Hangar 9 339. This is video number two wrapping up. We got our gear installed. We got all of our surfaces done. That is complete. Next video, I think we'll be wrapping this aircraft up. Um, next video, we're gonna do all of our installation in the equipment uh, throughout the aircraft, the wiring, of course, turbine installation, turbine running, plumbing, all that. So lots is gonna happen in the next episode. I think we'll probably finish this up in one more episode. So we'll see what happens. But again, guys, thank you for supporting the channel. Don't forget to check out Trusty Bent Screwdrivers on the website. There is a very limited supply of these things. So um, if you're interested in one, grab one because I only have 83, I think, available. Um, as of right now before they actually are up for sale. Last thing I'll tell you guys about is our RC Air Experience podcast channel. We've got three podcasts on that channel, linked down below in the video description. Uh, one of them is with me and Anthony, the other fellow that uh, I'm doing the podcast with. Number two is with our wives, it's pretty funny. And uh, number three was with FR Sky Steve from FR Sky. I uh, had a great two hour sit down with him and, and asked some great questions and some great conversations. So I encourage you guys to check it out if you're a podcast fan. They are as of right now only on YouTube. So uh, links down below to that channel. Thanks guys for watching and we will see you in the next video.